Well, welcome gamers to episode 6 in this Let's Play series of Shadow Empire. My name is Daz Tactic. Welcome to the channel, welcome to the series, and uh, we'll just get into it. Uh, again, I will just start off with a special thank you to Patreon supporters or anyone who supports the channel, whether it be through coffee.com or um, any of the mirrored ways are all sort of down in the description. Merchandise, etc, etc. I'm actually wearing one of my shirts at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go and uh, get into it, actually. So we've now got this AI surrounded. Uh, I don't think it'll be able to do too much. This is the Black Hole Rebels, essentially, is um, is sort of what this one's been called. But this has been brought in if, in the last episode. In the last episode, we uh, found a, a beeping computer back in Picard and uh, in the ruins of Picard. And we did actually then sort of uh, activate it or ask it a question, which triggered a uh, an, a an alien or an AI sentinel which is now sort of being surrounded um it will do it it can do a lot of damage so just just be aware when they do come they're not difficult but they just they can cause issues depending on where they spawn so anyway we've done that one in the last episode uh we are building up and this is really probably where we want to focus on this particular episode we're building up to take over um M Mabario Pax, who are friendly with us actually so they're it's sort of hard because they're they would be ideal friends. <laughs> so in one sense, if you are trying to sort of um, win the game and you're allowing, yourself, I don't tend to play with, I don't tend to let myself have um, have relationships with major players unless there's a good reason for it, uh, and it'd be, for the simple reason I, I enjoy combat in the game. So uh, if we if we did try to use diplomacy, we do have a lot of. A lot of tools at our um, like at our, at our area. We've like we've got like open contact, uh, and then we've got sort of non-aggression pacts, scientific cooperation. There's a lot we can do, and particularly if we if we bring in a foreign affairs council. I tend to have like a house rule for myself that I don't use the foreign affairs council. Just, that just sort of keeps the aggression high. But in this case, having a republican right next to us is um, yeah it means that they just want to be friendly. Now, we can see that at Mambario Ruins, there's different assets that they've got into here. Like they've got scav furnaces. I don't know where their city is. It's probably in here somewhere. So that's sort of what we're aiming for when we actually do everything. I've got to think, okay, well, what's the, my best avenue in? And I think my best avenue in is through this avenue here, through this, um, through this section. So we may sort of build up, uh, if I just press number one and then just sort of close and, and so we can see what's going on. Maybe at Murrayban, we actually build in more than what we actually have here. Maybe we actually sort of set this one up so that we end up with a lot of supply because we're going to we're going to be really jumping through our supply an awful lot when we do get started. Uh, other things that we actually have, we do actually have the artillery is actually still back over here, which is fine. So that's actually just sitting there. The um, we're going to be bringing the, the tanks through. You can see that there's a lot of a lot of the. Um, a lot of what we actually have is being sent down here anyway, just from, we did this one, de uh, not decades ago, episodes ago, <laughs> it may feel like decades ago, but anyway, it's episodes ago, we did set up our um, our traffic signals back in here, just to sort of push them off in different directions. Now, without the Economic Council, we're not discovering anything, we will need to get that up and running fairly soon. Our Staff Council, just as a really quick overview, if you just go back into our reports, have a bit of a look. We are now back to being loved again. <laughs> in the last episode, that had dropped a little bit. Um, back and through here, we've got the staff council is 27% along the way to actually to operationalizing the light armor army. I do need to f see what's happening with this um, because I, I don't think I selected that one to just go ahead. I may have, I may have, but I can't remember doing that. Uh, anyway, we'll let that one sort of come. This is important. We want this one before we do any actual attacks. And we may get away with just one army, one of these armies. The AI is so much better now than what it was before, though. Um, now, military research is basically now just sort of... Um, is back into, into full-on discovery mode. So we're sort of doing everything we can in discovery. Uh, model design. We've got no research targets. This is interesting in here. And the discovery investment is, is going to... There's going to be 115 put into discovery in the current climate, but I may need to change that. And I'll show you why in just a second. Interior Council doesn't really matter that much. The Air Force the uh, Air Force Council is just sort of trying to get discovery at this point in time as well. So discovery investment is at 328 bureaucratic points. We're only getting 30 per turn. So it's gonna take a while before we, before we get anything in through there. So why is the Model Design Council 
In fact, I guess we should look at both of these. If we just go across to types, we now have one of it. There's no nothing open here anymore for discovery. So I do need to go and build some other things. I think I'm going to start with a bazooka. Actually, I'm not really ready for that. I am not really ready. I might just get something that doesn't really matter that much. Like the mechanized artillery, that would actually be fine. That would then like th that then opens up the rocket rocket launcher, and we do actually, but we don't haven't actually mastered rocketry yet. We've we've discovered it, but not mastered it. So I might not worry about that one so much. Uh, Jetpacks we can't get just yet. Maybe the maybe I, I don't want to do this one until I've actually got combat armor. I don't want to be wasting um, discover like wasting things until we actually have what we need. Medium tanks going to open up all of these. Let's do that. Well, not all of them. The mobile shield, we actually need to have shield generators. We don't have those at all. Assault guns, we're okay. Heavy tanks, we're okay. So we can start the process. And having the medium tanks designed actually wouldn't be a bad thing. And uh, there's nothing much else we're going to get in the meantime anyway. So let's just do that. So because there's nothing left for it to, to discover, I just need to do something. So let's just go back to the map our decisions and then we do actually have under org decisions we do actually have a design model design uh, council overview in this case we're just going to go straight down to medium tank start the development actually we're not going to do that we're going to go because of what we had learnt in the last episode we're going to go back across to here now the medium tanks um oh that's interesting they've changed the name it used to just be called um uh armor <laughs> that's good I'm, I'm glad that it's done that actually maybe it's still armor in the game Anyway, let's just go to new blueprint back and through here. And so this one here, we have a bit more that we can now sort of go and do. Now, if I've used howitzers for my light tanks to go after infantry, I should really go the other way and get, try to get some protection. Now, we know that the light tanks are, can have up to 50 millimeter um, protection, which means we only really have to go to 60 millimeter to make these ones fairly viable. So if we go to 60, we then do 639 heart attack, and then we want to sort of still keep it down so that it's it's um, it's not going to. We don't want it to chomp through the oil too much, but we need to have at least 50 ourselves, possibly up to 100. So you can see there the action point cost is really really high when we do this. If I go to say 50 at this point in time, you can see the oil is now 5.3, and then if I go to the heavy diesel engine, it's now 6.2. Uh, if I go to the double, and it's still really, really bad. The double is giving, is, is like it's 12.3 per unit of these in anything that we've got. This is a lot of fuel. But if I go to 100, the action point cost didn't actually change much. I love how the models change as well as you do things. It goes from 12... To 13.7. The action point doesn't really change anything. It shouldn't. What's plus 10 when it's actually underweight? Hmm. Well, I think I might go this way. So we'll get 100 millimeter steel plating on these. We can get up to 200 if we wanted to, but uh, this, I think the 60 millimeter high velocity guns, this will still allow it to. Move. If I go back to the heavies here, yeah, that's way, way too too difficult. Let's just go this way. Eventually, we can get better engines and all sorts of different things as well. So let's just go across. I should actually talk a little bit more now that we're getting these sort of more interesting type things designed as to how how this aspect does work. I might do it when this one comes through if I do, if I remember. So let's go and uh, and have this one as our medium tank design. Now these are going to be tank killers because we're going with uh, high velocity guns. I don't need very many of them, um, hardly any to be honest. But anyway, this will then open up other things that we're doing. So we just go back to the map. We now go back into our medium tank. We're going to select the medium tank design and we're just going to build a new design there. Right, that one is now done. Uh, let's have another quick look back at and see the um, the techs. Yes, we still need... We, combat armor is pretty much the last one. <laughs> it's the last one that we can really need... To, that we need to go and do. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to basically... Uh, well, that, that should come fairly soon now. 
<laughs> and then we need to get those ones researched. Uh, now, Vapelian Republic, we haven't actually come across these before. And these are, whereabouts are these? If we have a look at the strategic map, because we've, we've got, this is the um, Mabario Pax. Uh, we have our Black Hall Rebels back in through there. Uh, this is actually a good place to always find things as well, if you're aware of them. Like we weren't, we didn't even get to see what the unit was, but we are now, we now know what that actually is. Uh, Vapelian Republic, back in through here, is over this side. So that's interesting. Looks like they may have come through this other way, but potentially. Just there's just a little bit in there, and non-aligned forces is mainly in around them. So they're miles away. We don't have to really worry too much about them. So uh, we will go back to, and actually, if we do go back and have a look at the, the Vipellian Republic is um, wanting to blackmail us. They don't like us at all. I don't mind this. They're actually, they've stolen my logo. They've stolen the, uh, the Daz Tactic, which is the shirt that I'm wearing at the moment again. <laughs> get your merch, get your merch. <laughs> but don't get it like the Vipellian Republic where they've stolen it from me. Uh, so anyway, they've actually taken my, my main logo now and uh, are using that against me. So I'm going to have to just have to wipe them out. Now, if I was playing diplomatically, which I'm not, but if I was, uh, I would possibly try to make friends with one major to then both of us go after the other major. And where are we with the victory overview? There's only the three of us on the, on the uh, map. They're miles out in front from everyone else, so they're actually really, really doing well. So I think I'll still just take over Mabario Pax myself. I, I don't think I'm going to let them survive. So we're going to go through, um, they're a long way ahead. This is going to be cool, actually, later on when we do get going. So we can, we should, we're going to try to gobble up Mabario Pax ourselves and, uh, and then go after the others. So let's just, let's just keep on going that way. Yeah, that's going to be interesting, actually. There's going to be some, some wild fights in the... Uh, this could be quite a long series, actually, with that in mind, but it does look interesting. So um, now the other thing I'm also doing, I should point out, is that I am building up and this often people often don't do this. I notice in games is the um, the build up here of both industrial points and also of metals. I'm not wanting to build too much. I'm thinking I may push to have um, logistics coming down for this attack, meaning that I may have to go and uh, if I just go back to Moraban and uh, the assets there. I've built barracks and hospitals here, by the way, just to sort of uh, bolster things up a little bit. But I'm thinking of actually upgrading the truck station because we're going to be pushing out with that. And I'm also thinking of getting a rail line. Let's just see what the cost of essentially just getting the rail line through initially would be. Now, I'm happy for it to follow the road all the way through. There's no, there's no tricky terrain all the way through with this one. So if I press the R key, or if I go down to, which one is it? I only ever press the R key. <laughs> um, construct road, this one through here, which is the short key is R. If you go to rail, and if like rail through certain terrain is fairly expensive. Tree, like forest, it's actually not that bad. Like if I click on here, for example, and then just start to have a look, that's that's 90 industrial points and 90 metal to get through the, the actual forest. So that's 180 to get to, to get through two of them. If I come back down through the ruins, the ruins is only 20 with 40, 42 metal. If I go to uh, the savannah, that's 30 and 60. Okay, so it's actually cheaper to go through the, through the ruins. If I start, I'm just going to left click and start here, for example. To do it, yeah, so to do it even just through normal planes, grassy planes is the same as going through, no, it's not quite the same as going through Savannah. It's 21. You can you do get some savings by um, by sticking to roads, actually, yeah, so you get some savings by going on the road anyway. So I'm just going to go and follow and just see what this would then cost me to get to there. It's only uh, 429 uh, industrial points and nearly a 1,000 metal. Now, the metal is going to then mean that could be a bit of a problem for me because we will then be chewing up not half our metal but you know maybe sort of like close to uh, like over a third of our metal so uh, we're going to be left with say 1200 1300 somewhere in the in through there if we did that 
Um, the reason for doing this would be to um, re really sort of boost this one up. Now, the other thing we actually have is, um, if I just go back and press the M key again, and have a bit of a look back in here again. And if we just went go back into our construction, we would then need under logistics to then go and get ourselves a rail station, which would cost me another 500. So we're now up to half our metal gone just to just to build those two. At the other end, we need at least a railhead, which is only another 125. So we're now we're down to you know around about a thousand metal. How is that going to work with our with our um, armor? Now getting getting the logistics to here is actually really really important. So I'm just thinking ahead a little bit here. I'm just sort of uh, I haven't thought this one through at all. But if I just you know for example click in here, and then just go to raise formation. Uh, if I go to independent battalion of light tanks, these are going to cost me 360 for just one of these. Now, I've really got to multiply that by at least five. So I need 1,500 thereabouts to bring in a group of light tanks uh, of the actual metal itself. One thousand. It's, it's going to be, actually, it's going to be even more than that. So it's going to be, let's just, let's just pretend that they're... Um, it's going to take about 2,000 metal, which is about what I've got right now. So I can't afford to do both. I'm going to need to um, build up until we've got at least 3,000 metal before I start thinking about um, building a railroad. So I hope that makes sense because if I do it, if I build the railroad now, I may not have time to build my tank force. Also, I'm going to be needing with OHQs, I'm going to be wanting to get infantry. Now, the infantry is, is very, very cheap. I'm probably going to need to get some other machine gun units as well. These are also very, very cheap. I've got enough recruits for these. And I'm ultimately going to need to have... Yeah, I'm, I should probably try to get more recruits. Um, so we might even just start to get that one set up. Like there's, We're probably going to need two more infantry groups and a tank group before we really can declare war. So with that in mind, we're going to be close by the time we actually do all of this. But we can just go back into Jupiter. With Jupiter is the only one that would actually give us troops at this point in time. Actually, maybe I should talk about that as well. I'm sort of there's all these little things that you. I'm just. I know how the game plays, so I don't even look at them anymore. But if we go to Jupiter, and um, we can see there that we've got a hundred percent. This is cultural adaptation. So these guys are a hundred percent on side. Anything we say, they're going to be go. Yep, okay, you know, jingoism. Let's get into it, and uh, we'll all sign up. So when we go and have a, when we talk to, I'll come back and talk to the governor. But we do actually have this uh, cultural adaptation. Just means that they will basically uh, just do whatever we need them to do. If we go down to the other other locations, so this one in here, you'll see that the cultural adaptation is zero. So if we have a look, these are um, these are vid, vid, vido, and they've got high aggression. These are religious fanatics that we had taken over, and so these are not like likely to sign up for us. Uh, so they will eventually. So um, so the cultural adaptation score at one hundred, the culture of the population of the zone is completely in accordance with your regime's culture. It will increase in, if the zone is set to regular zone and if population loyalty is higher than fifty, which it is at the moment. It's seventy two. Uh, and I have actually made it a regular zone. I didn't record that in the last episode, but it did just. I've only made it very recently. Let's have a look at the other one, which has been a, under our control for a little while. Picard is now at twelve and in, improving t turn after turn, and so it still won't give us units yet. But it's heading that way. They're, they're also religious fanatics, and and they are. Um, but they are now moving in a positive direction, and so this is good for us. So in that case, what we need to do is to um, is to not rely on these two centres for propping up our troops. We need to go back to the um, to the capital, Jupiter, who will actually do it because they're a hundred hundred cultural adaptation. They will actually go. Yep, they'll sign up. So they'll actually join the army because they're in in, in alignment with our um, with our cultural goals and also with uh, you know with with the direction that we're taking. So what I'm going to do through here is I'm just going to go across to um, back. To, if I if I click on the zone that we're in, and then I click on the minor city, it will then show me the uh, just a summary of what's going on here. And so I'm going to go and call Alec. I'm going to go back to his zone orders. Copy that. Now, when we come back in, we've got things, for example, like the worker salary. I might just bolster that one up a little bit, although it is extremely high anyway. They're very very happy. 
Yeah, I'll keep it down at five. I won't do it. Now, the recruit sign-up bonus, this is just the default for the game, but I'm only asking for 500. They'll actually, they'll give me at least a couple more. Uh, that mean, they'll give me whatever I ask for, really. But 700 per turn is, is usually pretty good from your capital. And so I'm happy enough with that one. We'll just confirm those orders. So we go from 500 to 700. Copy that. We don't want to be draining it too much away from the from the uh, cities, but that's uh, that's enough. Anyway, Vapelian Republic demands a release of their spy, so um, I think we'll do it with their offer. I don't want to make it um, too negative just yet, even though they are quite negative. And then we have uh, Mabario Pax demands a release of their spy. Again, I would like to do it this way, just so we get relation decrease. But I'll just go this in, this side in here. So they're going to give us yeah, 11 PP. That's Roger all right. That. Training opportunity. Um, veteran sergeant, elite snipers. I always forget what these actually give me. <laughs> As the, the actual, I may, maybe talk about this one here. This is the second independent artillery battalion. Let's just go through how this one works and how you can sort of try to figure out how things actually do work with that one. Now, the second, in, I know that they're down in here somewhere. That's the first. This is the second. If I go and click on this one through here, you can see this, this is a feat that we're now going to be adding into the actual into the into the unit itself. Uh, actually, um, yeah. So this one here, for example, the, the, we've got military police already in here. I think we can only have like two that that would be applied to these particular type unit types. So military police. Uh, so military police embeds itself with troops to make uh, sure they don't disobey our commands. So seventy five percent of retreat combat results is ignored due to their intervention. Now we don't. For for, um, for artillery, that's not a very good thing. It was just randomly added in at some point. Uh, so the rate and this this can actually happen. You often find that there'll be feats that have been added into uh, various um, as aspects of the game that you may not be fully sort of aware of where they actually are. So in this case, we've got the um, uh, yeah, ratio acquire first chance per round is um, so it does actually make them a little bit more effective I think and, and Im embeds uh, with how many subunits so three of our five will have military police with them and so this one here we have to think okay well without really knowing what they what what the actual card is uh, elite snipers is going to make them uh, I guess more effective with their firing and the uh, and the best prospect into a veteran sergeant is going to give them pretty better ex experience but let's just go with the Veteran. Let's go with a uh, veteran sergeant and just see what actually what actually happens here. So we go across that way. We click on OK. We now actually have the veteran sergeant has now come in. So here's the feat for the veteran sergeant. The veteran sergeant provides the troops he's embedded with with a plus forty percent on their attack rolls. There we go. Uh, can be upgraded to lieutenant. Uh, so uh, and so these this this whole other interplay with the actual units as well that you don't really you don't have to get involved in, but there, there is so much depth in this game uh so um yep so the so the ratio uh, subunits is um basically one one to ten so acquire the first chance per round embeds with how many subunits two of them so three will have the military police two will have the, the veteran sergeant that will in, then impact what they do in combat and nearly every unit's going to have these already like this one's already got military police um, that one doesn't, of course. The military police add in through there. Now, most of these will come in through just because of our profiles. Like if we have a look at the... In fact, if we go back to management screen and look at the profiles, which we haven't really had a close look at, military police should be under one of the ones that we've got under green. Um, it's a negotiator. There it is. So under enforcement. So... Because we went with the enforcement one, we've actually got we've had this one around for a long period of time, and so these will just be added in at random, at, like with what we actually have. We may get other things like under fist. We've actually now got this guy here. This is the people's hero, so we may start to find these just get automatically added in as well. Um, so we can actually go and 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 put the, the, we may pick up cards for some of these as well. Yeah, we're not going to have these. This is no retreat. It's interesting how things actually do work with the with the game. But if we go across to our strat cards and then just go down to units. So political aid truck is the one that we're sort of picking up at the moment. And so this is one where we can add these to our units as well. These are another feats that we have control over. So the political aid truck is one that, we, that uh, would also then come through 
we have a look at these, so we should actually find political aid truck in here somewhere. Um, that would, uh, it's interesting that we've actually bypassed this one. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, political aid truck, where are you? It's private investment. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where it actually is. Anyway, it's in there somewhere. It may, uh, I'm sure it would be associated with one of these. It may have even been one that we lost. I know we did lose one of these um, a few, t a, few a little while back. As as our um, as our process sort of changes, maybe it's this one here. Is that it? No cabinet retreat. Yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll keep on going. <laughs> I sort of this this little thing. I don't really look at as to what, why or where these things are coming from, but I thought that they were to do with the uh, profiles. All right, let's just leave them off, but we can apply them if we wanted to as well, just to different units. And they can be very, very worthwhile. So just be aware of that. I'm not sort of min-maxing enough to, to be really focused on that one. Anyway, that's sort of where we are. Let's just end our turn. There's no urgency just yet. <clears throat> okay, we got to the enforcement. That was just luck. Okay, so we've now discovered a new tech, the turboprop engine. By supercharging the airflow, we should be able to improve on the regular propeller engine. Um, now, I want to get helicopters because they are quite useful. So I think we'll just keep on going with things. We've got expel population, recruit a citizen. We'll just dismiss that one. Um, now, there's something that's coming through. Yeah, that's the other location there over, over the other side. I might just, while we're still just waiting for things to happen, there's something in here. Yeah, we don't know what that is. Just leave that one back there. Now, this thing hasn't moved off. It's going to kill it if we... Um, now, if we go and attack this with all of these, we've got a reasonable chance. These will defend not as well as if they attack. So let's just go and attack this. It's getting a lot of hits. It's got a couple of kills already. Wow. <laughs> we lost three units. So I'm just going to click on OK. That's going to upset our readiness with everyone. Let's just go back to the replacement troops. We pro sort of really need to have like rocket propel grenades or anti-tank type, type weaponry coming back in. Um, let's just go back across to our replacement troops and through here. We need to just get a couple more. Just get those replaced. Now we need to get on top of these as well before we can sort of really uh, do any warfare. But these are extremely strong, <laughs> as you can see. Um, I could have, look, if I if I attacked with that one, it's 3.1 to 1, but they're going to just smash their way through here uh, with no r real issue at all. So it, it's sort of, we're going to need require a lucky shot to get that one. Uh, once we get our tank force, we may be able to sort of bring some tanks across just to help out with that. Um, decisions, back into here, national budget, allocation. I'll just go through a few of these ones, new demand. The, the city of Robespierre is to be conquered. Now, Robespierre, where do we, where is that? Just zoom back out. I can only assume that it's in here. So I'm going to go yes, because we do want that one. It's round, got to be done by round 40. We're in round 30. So we've got 10 turns to basically try to do this one. That's probably about right. It's going to be right close, there. but let's just go with the demand. Uh, policy speech. So a goal is a quality of life in the zones reach at least 42 points. Um, number of hexes in which you have recon reaches 655. Goal is that our bureaucratic assets reach at least seven levels. Now, the bureaucratic assets are pretty high at this stage. I could get more. I could, um, if we have a bit of a look to see what's going on with that, I'm sort of, I'm interested in that one simply because 
uh, it would be something that I that I do want to um, I, I want to keep the bureaucratic points being really really strong because that's how we get ahead in the game. That is the name of the game. So I can go through and actually have a bit of a look. We've got um, this is only hex feats and auxiliary assets. That's not going to be it. Uh, where is it? This is quality of life research government assets. So bureaucratic offices. I'm just filtering down the bottom here. Uh, by uh, by these sort of government buildings, so I can filter by all sorts of different things. But I've, you can see there, I've got this. Um, it's showing that there's nine buildings in Jupiter, but the ones that I'm interested in is the the buildings that would be that would count for what they do. We've got a level two there, so that's one two. Um, high command. I'm not sure if high command does count for this. I think it does. I think any building that actually produces. Uh, bureaucratic points is a bureaucratic building. So we've got we've got level two there. So that's one, two, three, uh, four, five, six. So we only need to up the Moraban one, which is only giving us 50. If I up that one to the level two, that would then satisfy that last one. And I do want to do that because, you know, it's another 150 bureaucratic points means that all my research, everything I'm doing is going to be done so much better. So let's go and let's go and accept that last one. So just go back to the map. I hope that makes sense. Like I'll, I'll just go back into there. I'll just see if it kept the filter. I'll just go undo, undo the filter. All right. So at the moment, we only have six levels and uh, and it's saying, you know, do you want it if you do seven? Um, yeah, the goal is our bureaucratic assets reach at least seven levels. Yep, no, not a problem. So we'll just click on OK, and then we'll just go back in and sort that one out. So if we just come back into Moraban, construct, government building, and in this case, we just want to go to the bureaucratic offices version two. It's only doesn't cost us much. It does cost us two rounds. So 400 metals is probably the one thing that I wouldn't like. Also a fair bit of, of energy, but the energy looks to be pretty good at the moment. So just let that one go through. We've got to keep on checking this, but it's not looking too bad. Um, all right, so we then actually have uh, five more decisions, so national budget allocations. Just go to org decisions, your new organisation. I am thinking I bring in the Economic Council now. We really should have brought this one in earlier, but um, we, if we do it now... We're then going to start to prospect and find other resources. And I think it's time to do that. So let's go and add that one in, even if we don't have someone good to do it. Now, as far as the Air Force, the turboprop's a good one, if we have a quick look and see what they've got. Um, so they've found turboprop. Ultimately, we need to get three in any area before we can then open up the other areas below it. Now, we've got side skirts already in there, and we're going to get... We're looking for combat armor. We're going to get that one. They can then get the gore small arms as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and uh, I'm going to wait until I get helicopter engines. So let's just leave it for discovery at the moment. So we'll just go back into here. So just go no target, which will then mean that all of our points will then just be left back in discovery. National budget allocations. Now we don't actually have the other one. So I'm just going to go no changes here. In fact, I'm going to change this one slightly. Oh, there's, sorry, there's the Economic Council at the top there. In fact, I will keep that one where that is, but I want to, I want to switch now between the, the Interior Council and the, uh, the Air Force Council and start to bring this one up a little bit. So I'll confirm that one. Quack Doctors, act, active in, in Moraban, will give our full support. When we give our full support, you'll notice that there's like 136 with a little asterisk. Now, what this means is that we end up with getting an extra 50, usually. It's, um, oh, hang on, we, here, here we go. It says uh, you'll get 80 on top of your roll uh, from two different rules because if we give it support, whereas we don't get that one, um, it, says, it says we get 30 for, uh, for different things there as well. So there is a difference there. But anyway, that's, that's um, we'll give our full support. Order acknowledged. Critical success, that's good. Mabario Pax demands release of their spy. So we're back to here this one again. So I'm just going to go. I don't want to. I'm just going to. Go, I don't want to upset our people. So let's just accept Roger their offer. That. Okay, and we'll end our turn here. Did 
don't know what this is. It's moved off. Here we go. So this is the last one for us to discover. Just unluckily, we just couldn't get to it until now. So now what we're going to do is we're now going to be sort of wasting some of the, the like those few discovery points that we actually had. Um, they'll just sit there though until we get the next thing open. Um, <clears throat> let's just go forward. Dismiss that one. Dismiss that one. So now we want the combat armor. So we should actually have a decision. New director for the Economic Council. We don't have anyone really all that good for this one. We'll have a look at that in just a minute. Um, yeah, so the organ organization decisions didn't kick in with saying what should we now discover, what, what should we now do for the um, for the military council because we've just been keeping it on dis on um, on discovery basically the whole time and um, and not really doing anything. So we definitely need to go back, go to our reports, organisations, and go to the military research council. And so at the moment they're not doing anything with actual research. We now flick this one across, just call her up, Pandora, and we're now going to give her research that we want her to do. Order received. And we have a few of these now that we want to, we want to, we want to action, but the first one is combat Order armor. Received. So we want to go that way initially. And now we'll be going through and building everything up. So discover, and this is the Economic Council task priorities, um, is going to be discovery priority chance, is going to be, again, it's this discovery research. It's that sort of thing where we just have like a couple of points, so maybe three in there. I'll come back for research. Prospecting, not really all that important to me. I'll just keep it on, say, 10 at this stage. And the economic policies are not really all that important. Actually, maybe I'll go up to, say, 20 for these. 20 for that one. That gives me 57 for the other one. In fact, if I leave that one on five, that we've got 55 for research, five for discovery. That way we're still trying to get our, our, our research done, but we are also doing prospecting and also getting economic policies done. So we'll confirm that one. And we just now need to get somebody else in there. Um, before we do that, we'll have a quick look at the zone. So minor worker strike. If it's if it's lowish, our money has now turned out quite good because we've got all of the centres, the population centres, uh, happy. So they and they're paying taxes. So uh, so yeah, I'm happy enough to do that. Everyone likes democracy, and so democracy is getting higher and higher by doing this, and it's not costing me a hell of a lot. New director for the Economic Council, not happy with that one. Diplomatic decision. So Mabario Pax demands release of the, another spy. So we'll actually just go and uh, just go to this one here Roger again. That. Now we'll be at war with them soon enough. Um, now if we go back into what was I going to do? I just forgot what I was going to do there. Um, oh, that's right. We're going to see if we can bring someone better in to look after the um, the new council. Now we have three citizens. These would probably be our best bet, unless we have a senior. Uh, let, oh, we've got a senior. Good. Okay, well, let's recruit one of these. We'll execute that stratagem. There's another way we can tweak this as well. If this if this guy isn't all that good, because sometimes these can be terrible. <laughs> let's just go across. And he's only a cap two. This is Ignatius, our man. Um, no real skills in through here. Very, very good covert ops, though. So he'd be a great spy master. That's something we should actually look at maybe in the next in the coming episodes. So we'll, uh, that, that way we're going to be basically getting nearly all of our councils in fairly early, actually, in this game. But, um, yeah, she's the cap four. You know, she would be much, much better. She's already good at this. I think we'll call her in. So let's call her up and give her, we're going to relieve her and, and offer her a better job. So she's now going to come in as the um, as the as the commander. Oh, sorry, as the when we go to the decisions, we want her to take over this particular role. So we'll appoint her into that role. Order acknowledged. The other thing I could have done, and I might just show this anyway, just so you've got some information about it, is in your strat cards. There's another aspect to these. There's certain things like we don't need to increase our income tax anymore. We've got. Um, what other things are there that we don't need? With this, some of these we probably won't if, won't bother using. If there, if you've got cards that you just don't need, uh, one of the things you can now do is go to the scrap mode and 
sometimes you can bring in some pretty exceptional people and you know what they're going to be before they come in. And so let's just go to scrap mode in here. And you can see there, these are worth two points. We have to get up to 16 points for the next one. So let's just go across. So we're not going to increase the income tax anymore. I think we had a decrease as well. Decrease, I think we can still play, I think we can still play one of these. I'll scrap one of those. I'll scrap the decrease. We don't want to be doing that one. We don't want to be decreasing that one either. We're up to 12 points already. Um, you know, if there's certain things, these are all worth just small numbers. Some of them are worth a lot. Like these are worth three points. Leaders, I probably won't bother with any of these. Like so we may need these if we have, if we run into troubles. Sometimes you'll end up with stuff that is you know going to give you a lot of points. Zones, they're all just worth one point each. The militia project is worth a lot. Let's just go and do that. That gives me 20. I can then craft a stratagem. So let's just see what we end up getting. And now this is a thinking scientist, um, but only a level two person. So we know that this is going to be a level two person when it comes in. Now the next one after this, if we just click on OK. So she is someone we can bring in, which in one sense, in one sense, like she would come in as a scientist. <laughs> I'll click on OK. I, like unfortunately, if, if she was like a, a, if that was a four at the end, there would be capability four. So she's now in in nation will now sort of appear in the in the list. So I won't play her, but um, because we've now just appointed the other one, but it could have been interesting to actually bring her in because she would have been good in that role. Uh, anyway, that's just one another thing you can do if you need someone in particular. You may get lucky. And the fact that she's a scientist then, it then gives us the clues about where her skill set would be. Anyway, that's where we are with that one. Um, now, I've still got a bit of time, so let's just continue on playing. So they're now all sort of set. These are now all reset again, but their readiness is a bit low, down to 72. And again, I could I could get lucky, but let's just keep on going. Now, we should, should have the... We should be operationalizing the um, the the light armor army fairly soon. Now, now we're starting to find things. We've discovered more water deposits, which we don't need. Uh, there we go. Here's our medium, um, and we'll do a bit of a deep dive into this one. Let's have a quick look and see where we are with everything. So I love the summary. It just gives you a bit of a clue as to what's going on there. Economic Council is now just in full on discovery mode. The Light Arm Army is at 61%, so we're still a little way off. A couple more turns, maybe two or three more turns for that one. Combat Armor is at 20%. We just have to keep on sort of uh, pumping in the... Uh, like that's going to take another fair few turns for that one. Um, yeah, everything else is actually okay. So uh, the now the just the... Model design, it's now going back into discovery. There should be a, um, yeah, the model design council. Now, I don't really want to be doing anything here. I could actually get mechanized artillery. That's one that would be fairly safe for us to have a look at. Also, the motorbike infantry doesn't use combat armor. It, so we could actually develop that one up as well. While we, until we have combat armor, I don't want to be getting the bazooka or anyone that else, else that uses it. But the mechanised artillery we could make use of. The motorbike infantry is a bit of a no-brainer. Let's just go with automatic rifles in through here and padded in virus suits and just get that one out of the way. Uh, new governor for Moriban. Now we've got China Hicks, who is a cap one, but does have some skills. I think we might bring in... Oh, I've got so many of these guys. I think I might try to get a reasonable person. So I'll just go back to my strat cards. And if we just go back to the uh, nation, I'll recruit a, a civilian. Affirmative. And have a quick look and see what we end up getting there. Oh, cap four, Paul. Yeah, this, this he's awesome, and he does have very very good governor governor roles. He's only twenty one years old. Okay, so we may we'll put him in charge of Moriban now, and then move him across when we take over one of the major uh, other centres. 
So when we come back into our decision making, he will be, well, Paul's there. He says only five, but he will ultimately be very, very good. So I need to dismiss one of these. And when I dismiss somebody that's got like a color in behind it, it means that I'm going to be upsetting that particular faction. So I'm going to dismiss you. Received. And I unfortunately have to get rid of one of you guys. There he is. We'll appoint you. All right, so he's now been appointed. Uh, okay, so Vipellian Republic foresees war. The buzz in the Vipellian Republic is we are preparing for war with them. Uh, I'm not sure if their fears are justified, but it might just be too late to convince them otherwise. So um, should we make a public statement of uh, amity towards them? And I think that we'll go yes, because everyone that's what everyone wants us to do. Everyone's really quite friendly, actually, all of our... Uh, guys, we've been able to sort of stay true to our word a lot in this game. Uh, okay, let's end our turn. Actually, I was going to do a deep dive into the... Actually, I might, I'm just looking at the time. I may have to get going fairly soon. So, yeah, I've still got a couple of turns before anything else happens. Next turn, we'll actually go through and build up our armor army. Let's finish this one off with um, looking at the actual... What happened there with that model with the uh with the arm there it is it is armor it's not not medium tanks so we've got the dragon let's have a quick look and see what it's got now it's over like it's this is actually very good so it's above average with and i've talk, spoken a lot about structural design in through here the uh, it's got the base design in through here of 90 as well which is above average so this is a very very good design right from the very very start so it's got 400 firepower uh, because of the, of the ability that it has. But its overall combat rating is going to be... like It's going to have a very, very high combat rating. The cost is reasonably high. There's things, though, in as we come back down. We've got the production cost. We've got manpower of 100, metals 111, uh, industrial points of 105. Now, these also then get changed, I think, a little bit based on... not. It's not purely... Uh, what we have, if we go back to our blueprints and have a look at this one through here, I oh, know it is it is telling us there what it's going to be. So that that doesn't change. Okay, so the actual production cost doesn't change. Sorry, just go back to the, this one here again. Uh, it doesn't require any machinery, high tech parts, radioactives, or rare metals. Some of them do, but not not us at this stage. So just it's just metal and industrial points is all that's required. The operational cost, so it's going to have um, the movement oil is 100, 137, the uh, and then the combat ammo is 195, sort of what it, it does require in through there, and one upkeep of food per stack. So that's sort of where we are there. The oil is going to be a problem for us, though. Design-wise, uh, we'll, we'll do a deeper dive into this one, but this is sort of like, again, where different things have kicked in. Now, the engine design this means it's going to be actually more efficient than what we thought it was going to be. Uh, the weapon design of 87 means it's a little bit under at this stage. It's still good, but still a bit under. And then the armament design, uh, sorry, the armor design is about sort of average-ish in, in what we actually have. Now, over time with the field testing, in fact, if we go back to the light armor, uh, we can see there that these have been improved because uh, with the blitzer all the way through, uh, the armor here is actually a little bit better than what it should be. The others are a little bit under, so this is not as efficient as what the is as, as what this other tank is. Although this tank uses a lot more fuel to get around, so these engine designs and things are sort of a bit of a dark art trying to figure out exactly what they do do. Uh, I don't tend to watch them, but this is a very very good one. <coughs> we'll have a look at a deeper dive with that one through there. We've got the firepower, we've got the weight, which don't change from the, the base design. The engine power is 800, which doesn't change. The armor strength is 940. Uh, no field testing just yet. The, so these are the hit points. These then take into account the different design considerations, uh, the as do the attacks and, the, and the, like the, the, the hard attack, soft attack. So when we look at the 556, if we look at the hard attack of 556, and we look at the weapon design of 87, and then we look back at the blueprint for this one. It thought we, our heart attack was going to be 639. So we're actually under what we should be doing with the heart attack. So the heart attack is not quite working with the way it should. Also with our hit points, our hit points should have been um, for, for, uh, for five, 576. So if we have a look back at the, um, at the model again, 
our hit points is uh, five five sixty five at the moment because the armor is slightly under what what we would expect. So when we have them over, it would then mean that the hit points would be higher. So we we don't survive quite as as well as we thought. We don't quit. We don't um, hit quite as as hard as we as we would, but we're more efficient with our with our use of fuel. So and and also with the power of the actual engine itself. So that's sort of where that one does work. Now the techs we have, we're always going to get. Uh, side skirts. Um, you now we've got small arms, yeah, which gives a small arms protection of plus two hundred. So it just makes them. That's an automatic tech bonus. So back in through here again. If we have a quick look at the um, yeah. So overall, if we then click on the actual dragon itself, we then get a summary back in through here with those different sorts of skills. But you can see there it's slightly under because those other design considerations are under as well. Now they do change over time as we sort of build more and more, more units. That's why I'm not too concerned about them. But if you have really, really bad numbers, you may want to relook at those as well. So we'll just open the design log. This, this is a whole other dark art. So we'll just finish it off with this one through here. But quite often, You'll see the base design is between 70 and 100, and we have, a, we have a base design of 90. Our structural design is between 70 and 130, and we have 107. So we're above average in both of those. The, um, now, as we come back through, we should then start to find the other ones with the engines and so on and so forth with this one. Um, uh, at 800, I'm actually not seeing it there. There's a lot in here, a lot in here. Um, yeah, here we go. So we've got essentially down through here. Engine design is 110. Engine design based on is is based on base design, modified for structural design. So even if we, when we actually come back through, it's still a, a random number because they're all done the same way. Base design and structural design sort of play a role in how these things come about. But there's also a random number as well. And so as we field test and get our base design up, and we've got a strong structural design it just means that we're going to get better and better and better designs coming back through and similarly if we started off with a very very poor poor structural design it means we're always going to be a little bit behind with these sorts of things as well so it sort of it does impact what does go on um i'm just trying to see if there's anything else that would then sort of show where this one does kick in yeah, they all basically, like all of these figures then basically come through and start to apply themselves down to these various attack modifiers. So we have like soft attack, soft defense based on firepower, um, hard attack, hard defense, you know, based on firepower as well. So we can sort of see through, these are sort of like basic numbers. It then actually has, like it's got zero air, air attack, uh, soft attack and soft defense for uh, modified for weapon types. We get a little bit of a modification there for the different types of weapons. If we have a look at the next one, the um, we should have more. Yeah, that's that's for soft, which is for, it's not a very strong number, but for um, for we've got soft defend. This is for armored fighter ve ve vehicles, but uh, the hard defend is uh, is going to be two thirty two. I'm not sure what this one here is. I don't know how that one sort of applies. The, uh, then we've got the air weapons. We don't have any of those in, in this thing. We only have one base attack as we go in. Uh, and then it's got the, essentially, the, it then modifies for the air pressure of the, of the planet that you're playing on, which is pretty amazing as well. So if you, had, if you were in sort of like a soup planet with very, very dense atmosphere, then that would actually have a bearing on the, on the, on the ability of your weaponry. Uh, but that would then be across the board, essentially, until you sort of got to your more your um, laser-type weapons in which case that wouldn't then kick in. Uh, again, hit points down through here. It's just, it's, there's a lot in here. It's really, it is a dark art, but that, um, but that engine, as I just see, let's have a quick look and see if there's anyone else. If we just go back to all, uh, this is for the models. Let me just go to all in through there and just go back to design. So some of these, you can see there, the, um, the engine design was poor. That's all sort of poor in through this other side. Um, these these don't like again very very poor with our grunts. Uh, machine guns are very very poor. The Cooper Plus actually has got poor engine, so poor uh, poor fuel efficiencies, but actually very good with weapon and also with armor. Uh, the trimmer gun is fairly is fairly neutral in through there. The Cooper Plus has actually so that's one hundred and ten a hundred. Let's have a go, look back at the other page. Oh yeah, actually that didn't change. That's interesting. 
Oh, that's, I don't think we had... Um, yeah, no, we did actually have them out. So we didn't... We, did we, that's still 88. But that one did go up. So that one did go up a little bit uh, over... T like when we sort of did our redesign. I guess because we brought a different engine in. Maybe... I'm just not sure how, how or why that would have changed. Uh, light tanking through here. Pretty, pretty bad with these sort of numbers. The Abraham, but then the Blitzer got much, much better because of these base numbers were actually reasonable. Um, and again, we sort of saw that these are reasonable as well. So we, the ones that we're designing in at the moment are, are doing fairly well. Anyway, we've still got a lot of work to do uh, with to, once we get the combat armor, but that'll be in the next episode. So guys, I'm going to leave it here for this particular episode. I uh, hope this has again been helpful. I know I've sort of been a bit all over the place with these things, but... Um, I, I, like a lot of this stuff isn't important, um, but if you're aware that it's there, it's just nice to know that it's it's not just a simplistic, you know, just a, you know, if you're wondering why a, why an enemy unit, for example, is so much better than your unit, it will be because of these sorts of little numbers. There'll be something in there. There may be some equipment that they've got that you don't have. Uh, there could be uh, all sorts of different things. It, it could be it could come down to the quality of of the actual unit. Uh, you just don't really know. So, um, but that's that's why certain things do change. But you do have agency and you do have impact over what you can do with your model design council to try to improve your situation. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.